Welcome back to Nick Lenz's Comic Corner, Classic Class Non Classic. This episode number 786 and double shot number 680. Two Batman trades. Now, this will be the first of three episodes in a row where it's nothing but Batman trades. And then basically the next episode of the three ones will be the Marvel trades. Okay, let's start with these Batman trades. First up, it is Batman Beyond Volume 3 The Long Payback. Collecting issues of Batman Beyond Volume 4. But actually, this is Volume 6. Issues 13 to 19. Now, there is one issue in here that's actually not part of the story light. It's Stanlish done by Brian Chang, who is actually the artist of this of, of, of most of these issues. Yes. Uh, Phil Holst was the other artist. All, all the rest of the issues are by Dan Jerkins. The Stanlish really has nothing to do with the main story light. It came out at a very weird time. Yeah, and this is something really weird about me on, like, what, what, like, this would be the second time I could think of where there's an issue that came about me on, and it's not done by the regular creative team, it's done by a fill-in writer, for some reason. Though I think now, since Dan Jerkis is no longer doing action comics, he might have a little more time, he might think, oh yeah, maybe he's a little more time to do this series. No, because he's doing Green Lanterns, which is going to be ending soon, though, with that book ending, it means this is the only book he's working on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that mostly is just uh, some kind of tournament going on in Gotham, and Luke and Mayor Luke Fox is in the issue, which is nice. And that's really it. Nothing really much happens except Batman pick up by a bunch of bad guys. In the main story, we have, which picks up like not long after the events of the previous arc, with with Damien being a new uh, demon's head, with Terry back in his regular Rebirth suit, being that AI suit that he should not have been in the first place, and. Also, during the po one point in the issue, him and his girlfriend Dana actually have sex off panel. You know, as I know this because when they cut to them later, after she cut close the door, she looked like she had a workout. Dana is in bed butt naked, and, and Terry's basically getting dressed because he has to go out and fight crime. Yep. Though, of course, that uh, they also have several characters show up in the Bat maybe on TV, like characters like Stalker. Uh, they even have uh, Madeline Walker, who was. The character, she, she's a member of the Royal Flush Gang. Yeah, she's part of the, the futuristic version of them, not the present day one, the, the version. And she has a crush on Terry McGinnis. Yeah, one of two women in love with them. Wow, does that sound very familiar? Yep. And according to Bruce, uh, she does not know that uh, Terry and Batman wanted the same. Also, this is also the start of Matt McGinnis becoming Robin Beyond. Yep. Yeah, this is the start of that. Mm -hmm. Let's see, besides Stalker and, and the Rough Flush Gang, there's a few other villains. Seems like they, It seems like Dan Jorg gets through like half the villains, uh, except for Blight. Yeah, Blight is nowhere in this comic book. He's probably the only like villain from the show who technically does not appear in this comic book at all. Let's see, besides the character Stalker... That's him right here. He was a villain, but he turned good. Yeah, it's like they reference stuff in the TV show. It's like the TV show is semi canon to the comic. It's it seemed like it's it yeah it's it's semi canon to the actual comic itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's also uh, the character Payback, who actually is is actually the father of another character, who took up the name after his son went nuts and tries to kill Batman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's really, it, it's really a great set of, uh, issues to read. And it's basically a six-part, even though this contains seven issues. Yeah, six to seven issues are actually part of the storyline. Yeah, I don't remember, I think that this, and they put the Sandler issue afterwards, which is nice, because when the Sandler issue came out, it interrupted the main story. Yeah, this is kind of stupid in the part of DC Comics do, but there may have been a reason for that. I think one of the sto I think one issue was late, so they had to get the artist of the series to come up with the story really quickly because the last issue feels a little bit rushed, and they just basically had to put it out the door because they had to put this issue the series on time. It's one of the two times I could think of where Dan Jurgens has not written an issue. The only time I could think of is where there was one issue written by Tim Seeley. At least he he's at least him I don't mind because he's actually written some bad books, so he don't have a problem with. But Bernard Chang is an artist. So he's one of two artists, I've, one of three artists I've seen lately who does an issue of a series they do they draw for. The other good ones have been like Patrick Gleason and been Brian Hitch. Brian Hitch, not that good of a writer. He's good at character development, but 
not good at telling regular stories, but he's a fantastic artist. The story in here is really good. I do recommend it Batman on fans. make this book a 9.5 out of 10. Next up is a classic story. Uh, printed back in the 1990s. Yeah, this 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 came out roughly like the first like this. This is Batman Thrill Killer. Now, when it was originally printed, look, look it up. Uh, the first miniseries, which was three issues, Thrill Killer. Uh, this is known as Batgirl and Robin Thrill Killer. That was the first miniseries, and then the second, and then the follow-up one shot, which was called Batgirl and Batman. Yeah, this is basically uh. This is this is this is written by Howard Shaken and now worked by Dan Buritin. Yeah, he has got eyes work for this. In this universe, uh, Batman does not exist in the first miniseries. Bruce Wayne is there. There's no mention if he actually was rich. Uh, and also, Alfred does not work for the Waynes. Yeah, he works for uh, Barbara Gordon, who's somewhat rich, and. Dick Grayson's parents were alive at first, and then they later died. And he he was a vigilante uh, when he became Robin. Yeah, he never was Nightwing in this timeline. Nope. And they do have a version of Joker. That's her pointing a gun at Batgirl. Yeah, her name is Beatrice. And get this, she is this world's version of the Joker. She's nuts, but she doesn't laugh. And and Harley. Now I'll get to the Harley Quinn thing in a minute. But yeah, first Barbara's relationship with Dick. Which, uh, apparently Jim Gordon didn't really care for him. Because he referred to him as a, as a gigolo. Even though he technically was not a gigolo. He was a circus performer. Yep. And he and Dick, he and Bruce Wayne in this miniseries never met. I think, I think Dick saw him once when he made, when Bruce made out with Batgirl. This may have given Paul Dini the idea to put Batman and Batgirl relationship. But technically Howard Chicken started at first, not, uh, Bruce, not Paul Dini, Bruce Tim, because a lot of people really don't like this particular idea, especially since that in the case of of uh, this particular idea of relation between Batman and Batgirl, this actually stretches as far back as the the Batman Beyond series when they reference this, where um, after Barbara and Dick broke up, apparently she and Batman had a thing, which that was weird. And the heck, they even put that as part of an actual 30-minute prelude for the Batman Killing Joke film, where they had Batgirl and Batman having sex on a rooftop. Gee, does that sound very familiar? But yeah, that has nothing really to do with this. I had to bring that up. Now, at the end of three issues, Dick Grayson is killed. Yeah, Dick Grayson is killed in the miniseries by Butrus, who's also kind of a uh, little bit like Poison Ivy in the way with the whole Poison Lips thing. Yeah, so she kills Dick Grayson, and Bruce Wayne becomes Batman in the original miniseries. And then, of course, leads into the one-shot, which takes place the following year, because the first miniseries took place in 1961. The following one-shot takes place in 1962, which introduces Harley Quinn, Black Canary, and Kurt Lance, who was her husband. Yeah, there's even also one point where they had it where Batman and Black Canary were going to make out, but they decided not to. In case you're wondering, has Batman and Black Canary ever made out in a comic book? Yes, they have. In one issue, also the Batman, Batman around Boy Wonder, where they made out and it's implied they had sex on the docks in the middle of the rain. Not kidding about that. That really did happen. So, also in here, they had where Bruce... Now, Bruce, when we first see him, he's a detective in, this mini, in, in the original miniseries. Later, he becomes Batman. And, yeah, originally... Barbara Gordon was Batgirl, and this is when she became Robin. She decided to take up the name, put put the Robin uh, coat on, just to attribute to Dick Grayson. Mm -hmm. Barbara and Jim Gordon do not get along. And because of the fact that he openly insulted her boyfriend, she told him to drop dead. Yep. Yeah, he's like, okay, it's, a, it's not even time for lunch, my daughter hates me. Yeah, he's having a really bad day. <laughs> Yeah, and that happened in the original miniseries. And apparently he didn't have a problem with the fact that his, his daughter was a vigilante. Yeah, he has no problem with this. Apparently he kind of knows. Uh, it's implied he may know. And at the end, end of the one shot, yep, he does know. Yep. This overall was really good. Howard Jenkins did a fantastic job with this series. I kind of wish he would also done the art because Howard Jenkins is a fantastic artist. Yeah, I've read a lot of this. I know it's one of the most famous series he did was American Flag. I, I've never read that. I've read a lot of his other work. 
Uh, I read this miniseries for The Shadow, which was awesome. And this is amazing. I'm going to give this book a... I'm going to give this book a 10 out of 10. It's really, really good. I thoroughly enjoy this series. And it's an Elseworld story. Yep. Who would have thought, basically, that an Elseworld story would be that good? Howard Chankin, basically, is the reason for that. Yeah, and also, uh, Harley Quinn does exist in this timeline. And, yes, the way that Howard Chankin writes Harley Quinn and Beatrice, they're, they're a lesbian couple. They don't have sex, but they are a couple. Yeah, there was at one point where Beatrice proposes to Harley Quinn in, in, in the follow-up one-shot. Mm -hmm. I don't really know why they, they, he decided to include Black Canary for, because she's not technically a Batman character. She's more of a character of a Green Arrow, but my personal guess is the reason why he decided to juice her in the following one-shot. My theory is this. is because the Birds of Prey tale had just started. Uh around the same time this one shot came out. So he probably threw her in there as part of a loose promotion for, for Birds of Prey. That's my only theory, the reason why I threw him in there. I have met the guy once and I've never had a chance talking about this mini series. But I talked to him for a good few minutes. He said there was some mini series he did uh that he actually regrets doing. Some of his work he actually regrets doing. I don't think this is a series he actually regrets doing. From what I can tell from reading his mini series he put a lot of love in, this mini, in, in the miniseries and one-shot for Thrill Killer. I kind of wish it was another one of these things because this is really good. There's still, it, it feels like when you finish reading this, it kind of feels like there's more story to tell. All right? So, yeah. That's really it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is episode number 787, double shot number 681. Okay? Until see you there. Bye.